I have everyone's attention, please? Hello. Good afternoon. It's time to get started. Are we ready to get started? <coughs> I know. <laughs> I know there should be many more people here for the lesson, but uh, it's been very beneficial to me to, uh, uh, to present this. This whole workshop's been very beneficial. I appreciate all of you coming here to this class and to this lesson on the last day of the workshop. I always hate that last day. Everyone's tired, and but it's been great. And a lot of people have gone to the other, there are several other really good lessons going on right now, too. I would like to share with you today um, how to be a good Christian and how to bear with one another. That, that's my topic this morning, bearing with one another. It doesn't sound like it fits with the theme, though, here, but, it, uh, but really it's, very, it's a very important lesson, very important topic. Notice the picture there of people helping each other. People have a heavy load, but the person behind them is helping to hold that load. It, no, not bear is an animal bear. It's the bear is into support. Bear to carry, to, to share the load. Bear with one another. Okay, we start the lesson. Be, uh, to bear with one another, it, the, the slide says, to be completely humble and gentle, to be patient, bearing with one another. So we have to learn to be humble ourselves. Sometimes we have pride. Oh, too bad, that's your fault, that's not my problem. That's pride, that's pride speaking. But where's our humility, where's our concern for one another, concern for what other people need? That's the attitude. We need this humility to, uh, to bear with one another. Bear with. The definition is uh, means to endure, to put up with, to like you put up with people or something, or to suffer with people, to suffer, uh, to share. Some translations say forbearing, that King James Version says that, uh, or showing tolerance for other people in the New American Standard Bible, Make, making allowances for each other's fault. Uh, many times we don't ac accept other people they have faults, you know, that's not acceptable. When people have problems, they're bothering me, that's their fault, I blame them. It's, we have to accept that. We have to allow for, we have to make allowance for people's faults, and that's not easy to do. God wants us to love each other, all people, or, or yeah, even those people who bother us. God wants us to love them. Some people... Feel oh I hate oh I hate that person that person really bothers me God's love bear with that person we have to it's easy to say but to do it <laughs> worthy 
That means to be appropriate, to we are worthy of God's of God of the God, worthy of the gospel. We are called to a worthy cause. Also means respect, uh, righteous living, or upright. Uh, upright means to live right, to try to live right. Means worthing of our calling. So if if we help people, see people have problems, help them to be worthy of the gospel, help people in need. There are many different ways that we can help people in need. Is it appropriate for a 80-year-old man to dress like he's a 16-year-old girl in a short skirt and all that? No, we don't dress like that. We must dress appropriate for our age. And some people dress weirdly. I mean, what, what is it? That doesn't fit their age. Who are, why are they dressing? Same, we must uh, behave ourselves, can conduct ourselves in a way that is worthy of the gospel, uh, the message of God. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner, in a way worthy of the gospel. We must live right, live worthy of the gospel. Because if we live sin, if we're in sin, that's contradictory. We, we, we can't uh, be, that's not worthy of the gospel. Being living worthy of gospel does not put Christ to shame. And that's why I must live right. If you're humble, you will remember that you're not perfect. A person very proud, I'm proud. I've got no problem, I'm perfect. No, that, that's not right. Hum we, we must be humble to know that we are not perfect. We do make mistakes, of course. But some people say, oh, you should know better to do that. You're a Christian, you should know better. That's wrong, why would you do Patient with them, patient, lear they're learning. Give time to grow, be patient, bear with them. That's why some people complain uh, ab against other people. If you're gentle, you say be considerate means to be have feelings, uh, con thinking about how other people feel. You hurt their feelings? You instead, be considerate. Uh, being appropriate means to think what you're doing before you say something. When you see a person doing something, see something negative going on, should I say something or be quiet? Or is there another way to talk to that person and approach them? And when I think and plan before I go and talk to that person, be considerate of their feelings. So we have to be careful how we approach the people. Sometimes people are approached in the wrong way, and it turns them off. They leave church. One time, not many years ago, one man, a member of our church, he was awkward, he was a new Christian, and he was visiting couple came into the church from a Catholic church. Oh, and he criticized, oh, the Catholic church is wrong, that's, no, that, I, I had stopped, no, no, that's not the right way. That, that person tried to teach them the gospel that way, and that, so I had to go intervene and step in and say, no, no, don't, don't listen to that person, he doesn't understand what he's talking about. He, he said these things, but... They don't all apply to you, and they, in a different way, you have to consider the feelings of this person. If I do not approach these people, and they'd left, then if I had not gone to approach them, they would have left forever. And so we have to be very careful what we say, how we say it. And that's why I told this person, no, don't talk to people in that way. That's not the way to teach. Be patient and be slow to react when others are, and when be slow to react when people annoy you. Not if, didn't say if they annoy you, it says when they annoy you, it's going to happen. You will face people, you will face people who get angry, uh, people who annoy you. You have to be patient with them, be, be gentle. Sometimes people are rough, like uh, uh, maybe, uh, somebody who's been a Christian for a long time and he's skipping, uh, missing 
worship, and you go approach him. What, where have you been? Why aren't you coming? Why are you misgiving? Church? And, and the person gets defensive and then embarrassed and, lang and leaves. Be careful how you're talking. Don't be blunt with people, but you, know, but you go approach them gently. I hope everything's all right. And you see, that's a better way to approach them, not so negative. You have to be careful how you approach people. Be slow when people are annoying people. Sometimes people are on our, s our case all the time. You have to be gentle. Be careful and patient with them. We must develop the fruits of the Spirit. The spirits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We must learn to grow and develop these uh, fruits of the Spirit. You want to become like Christ? That's it. It's not easy to do. I know that. When you, when you have to work with hard people, People who are easy, oh, that's fine. It's easy to be that way with people. But when people are hard, people are stubborn, people are difficult, it takes a lot more patience. <laughs> yeah. Bearing. Bear, bearing could be signed either way, it's like responsibility or like patience, either way. It means gr whatever grievances, gr it means like complaints or whatever happens when there are arguments, uh, disagreements. What you have against each other, learn to forgive. And that's why we have uh, just the same way as our Father, the Lord, has forgiven you. That's why I forgive plus, excuse me, bear with, yeah bear with each other some people they just dwell and dwell on the incident and won't forgive and that's very sad some Christians who just won't forgive uh, they need to learn to forgive each other bear with and forgive each other Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. We are all different. We have different personalities, different skills, different, different weak and strong in different ways. Uh, we must keep unity. Challenge. That's we all have different ideas, different viewpoints, different uh, views of the Bible. Uh, sometimes we don't agree well, but yet we have to still keep that unity. We don't want the division and the arguments. We need to keep the unity no matter what. We will not always agree with each other, but we must learn to accept uh, and share with each other and keep the bond. Keep. Keep means to preserve or to hold hard, hold fast to with each other in spirit. Christ praying for unity. Uh, uni Christ, pr Christ prayed for the unity of the church, even though we're all different, but yet still keep the peace. We ha uh, each of us have to do our part, for example. Uh, we are... Um, we, we, have to, we have to recognize that Christ is the head and has control... Uh, um, but each of us are different parts of the body of Christ as the hands and the arms, etc. Uh, but we all work together as one. As one. Yes, that's right. That's why Paul uh, wrote to encourage, keep the unity, because all of the, all in the early church, and especially at Ephesus, the, there were the Greek members there. Uh, most percent were Greek, but they didn't have that same spirit from the world. And they had... Uh, more philosophy, at, uh, but they didn't have the spirit. And so the Jews knew the spiritual side, and the Greek uh, felt that was new to them. They had to learn and to progress into that. Uh, they had to learn unity. Yes. Uh, uh, this is referring to the story in, in Ephesians uh, at the church at Ephesus. 
that is uh, in the area of Asia Minor, those are the people he was talking to. It was very hard for them to become accustomed to the Christian life um, in that area. And the Corinthians, what about that? Were there some Greeks in that area too, in that area? Yes, actually that was close to Greece, yes. That church were largely Greek people, not Jewish people for the most part. And, and yeah, the people in that area, there were a lot of people uh, uh, in trade and in business, a lot of socialization among different uh, nationalities. Um, so that's a lot like uh, the church in our hometown in Bakersfield, California, where there are a lot of people from different parts of the state, different parts of the country, um, and there's a high percentage of uh, people who worship uh, uh, in Corinth or people who are worshiping idols and doing different things. Um, Oh, people worshiping the Aphrodite and the prostitute worship in that uh, yeah, environment. Uh, people worshiping Greek idols. There were people uh, yeah, having immoral worship. And that that's what I'm talking about, that Greek culture, the they, uh, culture of the Greeks. They had all of that built in, and so they had to learn to change all of that as they had to learn the spiritual life, the abstract idea of the spirit was a challenge for those people. Had some other questions. Uh, uh, what did you mean by philosophy? It means those are people have different opinions, different ideas. Uh, so that means from God's word? No, that's not people who are doing things that were different than God's word. The question was, what is philosophy? And that was uh, people using humans' ideas, humans' philosophy, opinions, uh, not uh, not following the word of God. And another question from the audience. So these are people in the community who are following their own ways, not the way of God. Yes, yes, And but Paul's trying to teach the truth of the word of God. And people were following their own opinions, not the truth of God. Uh, like, for example, um, some philosophies, uh, uh, like hor today we have people like studying like horoscopes. People, that's like a philosophy. Uh, people who are believing each day, they're following their, what the horoscope says they should do on that day. People who are using that to control their lives and to direct them. People following horoscopes, that's an example of a wrong philosophy that's not from God. Another philosophy example, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Different uh, philosophers like Plato and like Socrates and Aristotle, uh, these are Greek philosophers that people, uh, the Greek people believed those ideas and followed them, and they heard, like Aristotle said, the deaf cannot learn, and so there's no point in teaching them. And people believed that. Uh, even some people today still believe that. Another from the audience says, uh, very important, the Greek language uh, is the foundation of the, of the Bible. Yeah, the Bible's written in Greek. Yes, but reading Greek, of course, is very difficult for deaf people to understand. Uh, and so we can find, you look up a word in a dictionary and have to translate. It's very difficult, though, to, to translate. Anyway, okay. Um, so, okay, let's, so let's go back then to this lesson, though. That's what I was talking about. The Greek people at that church, uh, their culture was so different, and they had to learn and be redirected, be refocused to the Christian way. So, okay, another thing from the audience. I saw another hand. That says, uh, for example, the philosophy... Um, and oh, December 25th, they're having that philosophy that uh, about uh, celebration for for Christmas. Uh, a Catholic Church encourages that. And okay. We 
we who are strong, or Christians who are strong, must accept or learn to get along with the failings, failures of the weaker Christian, people who are weak in faith, people who are weak physically even. And we have different, different kinds of weakness. Even strong people have strong, some weakness. And so uh, we must uh, bear with people who are, have failings. And uh, like some people have weak faith or weak faith. And some people are sick very often. We have to bear and support that. That is a challenge. Each of us should not be to please ourselves, but to please other people first. God loves the weak Christians, too. He loves all the Christ weak Christians. But some people will always be weak, still. Many years, they're still, still that way. Especially those phys weak physically, they can't, they can't get well. And people who are weak in faith, sometimes they never do learn to become really strong. Sometimes. We need to learn to be patient with those who are weak. That's why we must accept. Yes, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. Sometimes we, uh, you know, people say they're the same. They're saying they never grow up, and I get frustrated. They never, they're not mature. They never grow up, not maturing. There's still problems, problems. They cause problems. And what do you do? How do you deal with that? You be patient with them. And, and that's, that's why some people are just difficult. Sometimes there are difficult people, and we have to help them. And we have to uh, 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 give those people the attention that they need. And it gets tiring, and it's easy to give up and get out. But no, uh, we need the elders to help those people. Uh, uh, don't say kick those people out. No, bear with them. Yes, we must, must continue to bear with them. And some, but some people decide to give up. Uh, sometimes we have to defer to the elders. Uh, it's interesting that some preachers, uh, generally speaking, are, are, are teaching and some members uh, are still weak. Uh, and, and some people, they keep encouraging, encouraging them to grow up, but yet they still have not grown very much. And, they, and sometimes the people do eventually decide to leave. And... Yes, sometimes they do that, and then they'll go to some other place, and they have the same problems over there. Yes, and it just uh, uh, look for example the Apostle Paul uh, at the Church of Ephesus. Um, he just continued. Uh, 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 he he just continued. Paul just continued until he died. Yes. Uh, Another question from the audience statement. Um, he said, because Jesus is patient with us, uh, we, must, uh, we must be very patient, just as Jesus has been so patient with us. Another one from the audience says, um, and different uh, viewpoint, we have different views of ourselves. And uh, uh, somebody who's uh, somebody whose wife passed away, do they feel weak from that? Uh, no, they have to become strong. Um, and so, when uh, when the wife the wife dies in the Lord, then we look forward to meeting her again. We have. But I've heard that when you're in heaven, you won't know each other. Oh, yes. Yes, you will know each other. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that was news to me. All right. But I'll give you a short explanation from Luke chapter 16. Remember the story about the rich man and Lazarus. Um, both that had died, uh, you understand. And so uh, uh, Lazarus, uh, Lazarus was in comfort uh, with Abraham. Uh, and the rich man, he was... Uh, he could see them. He recognized, oh, Father Abraham, I recognize who he is. He had never met him before, but yet he knew that was Abraham. 
and he recognized Lazarus. Oh, tell Lazarus, please, to get some water to give to me. Uh, so, yes, the rich man, he was dead. And he w they knew each other, and so that was obvious that they should, s and Jesus taught us that, uh, that story, and so we can recognize from each other that, yes, we will recognize each other in heaven. And there are other verses also that uh, kind of tell us more about that. And that's why, uh, like in the Old Testament, you have David who had committed adultery uh, and his baby died. Uh, then he prayed and prayed uh, to God that the baby would live while he was still very sick. And David was prostrate before God, praying uh, continuously. But then when finally the baby did die and the servants were so afraid to even tell him, the servants were, were awkward, afraid to even tell the king that the baby had already died. Uh, and finally... Uh, uh, David noticed uh, the servants, they were whispering, and he stopped them and says, he's di dead, correct? Yes. And so David got up and he said, I can, uh, the baby cannot come to me, but I will go to him. That means someday he will meet, he will see his son, his baby son, he will see them in, in the future in heaven. And so, he, he, you know, the baby can't come to me, to David, but he w uh, David will go to see the baby in the future. So that's another example that shows... Uh, that some some idea, some clues uh, that we will know each other in the afterlife or in heaven. Okay, so back to the lesson. We need to learn to be humble and not to please ourselves. Oh, that is hard. I please. I want what I want. I want what I want. I want to be humble. I want to be humble to, like to other people, and 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 not think of other people, not just what I need. people who uh, we need to, uh, uh, some people who are not mature yet, we need to give them time to learn, give them time to mature. Uh, I have some people at our class that I teach, uh, there's one person always coming up to me, he's always uh, coming in and saying, and I've talked to him many, many times about these same things, and, and he keeps forgetting and forgetting these same things. He, he just has a weak memory, he just doesn't hold it much, in, in hold much in his mind. So I, at work, he goes to work and he does fine, but uh, the things we learn in class, he just keeps forgetting. Another comment from the class, I know some people have problems like that, they just keep forgetting, they keep trying to learn and they forget again. You tell them, you, they forget again. And uh, some people just have a real problem with that. That's right, you have to, uh, you just have to be patient and tell them again. Some people just say, bear with me please, accept them, accept their weakness, that's a weakness. If they forget a lot, if they have a hard time learning, Bear with them and explain it again. Just explain it again and again. It's the same story sometimes. That's okay. We should please our neighbors for his good, not our for our good. to put other people first before self, always. Sometimes, in some situations, like emergency comes up, you know, something says, I need help, or oh, I will go. But sometimes I'm, uh, I'm, in a si I'm in an emergency situation myself and I can't go, I'm stuck. So sometimes it happens that way that I have to say, no, I'm sorry, I can't go to help you. I have an emergency of my own I have to take care of first. So the, it does depend on the situation. And Christians, they, they tend to criticize and see faults in other people. Uh, people are missing church and they scold them for missing church. Your faith should be strong to bring you here to church. And we scold them that way. No. We must seek ways to build them up, not tear them down. Build, a, build people up, encourage them, lift them up, l ra increase their spirit, uh, make them feel good. And cha that's a challenge. Some people who are weak and, and not be weak in some ways, strong in other ways, and people who are stronger, they, they criticize people, and sometimes people criticize me for my failures. And I have to be learned to be patient we, and with each other. Uh, another comment from the audience. Uh, two, two brothers were fighting and uh, in saying, why, why are you fighting all the time? Why, 
and, and they say, what? Uh, you, yeah, no, I guess I clearly can't answer that. <laughs> Just like brothers, sisters, and spirits, sometimes they fight, but they understand. Uh, but, but get reconciled right away. Don't put the put it off. Don't leave the uh, animosity. Accept each other, and uh, and it's it's normal. Siblings, siblings fight, even though they're of the same blood. They still fight. So. Uh, and so when they become estranged, but then they uh, can. Uh, maybe, maybe they later they're in some kind of a competition and they okay. was there another question some another hand up in Many brothers need help, and we, 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 I mean, we have to learn to overlook the weakness uh, of uh, of the others who are who are younger and, and don't know. Uh, yes, and that's why we try to help them, encourage them, help them to grow, uh, give them ideas and something that to share with them. That sometimes they'll accept it, and sometimes they won't. It depends. It it depends on their level of understanding. And again, patience and maturity, it all varies. Another one from the audience. Uh, some person started an argument, and so I have to forgive them. I'm say I'm, I'm sorry. Even though it's not, I don't think it's really my fault, I still approach them to, uh, to try to solve it. Even though I didn't start the fight, in my, you know, I, I go to a person, I apologize that we've had this argument, this disagreement. That's right. You remember those Christians who don't make uh, the same mistake that I made. Sometimes I use, um, for example, sometimes people, uh, if I ask somebody for some work, uh, and then later, a few hours later, Maybe somebody's offered me a job or something, or a little some work to do, and then later they ch they drop, they change their mind, and I feel uh, deflated, feel bad about that. But I just have to forgive them, and and I don't don't hold that against them. Um, but the point is, don't use God. Don't don't use God's name in vain, uh, and don't. says to, uh, to do good to all people and especially the people in the church of God. We must take care of our family of God. The family of God is diverse and has uh, conflicts and strains and we must accept each other and learn to love each other. If we cannot get along here, then how are we going to get along in heaven? And God will not accept that. We must learn to get along with people now and then we can, we'll get along in heaven. Therefore, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you so that God will be given the glory. That's a powerful one. That's one area we're going to have to learn to accept each other. Because some people, oh, I don't like that person. Oh, that person, what they do, I, they come to church, but they, they don't look good. They, they just bother I've heard all these negative things about that person. Oh, I don't think that person should be in the church. If that person's coming, I'm leaving. But some people have that attitude, and and they some maybe they've known that person for many years, and that person comes to church. I won't have anything to do with them, and they leave. We must accept each other. Jesus himself accepted us for who we are before we became Christians, like Paul. 
Paul was uh, uh, terrible behavior. He was killing Christians. He was arresting Christians, putting them in prison. That was Paul. Paul was doing that. But Paul became a faithful servant of God. You never know what's going to happen in somebody's life that could change them. Another, another comment from the audience. Uh, some people who are in prison, but yet they can change. They people have done something wrong in the past, but they change. They're not the same person they were before. Sometimes people have to experience the hard knocks uh, of prison in order to get them to change. A and Paul had a hard had to experience a hard time. We must accept all people, poor, rich, young, uh, handicapped, deaf, blind, different color, different skin races, uh, ethnic backgrounds, different races, different countries. We must accept them because they're all different cultures, different backgrounds, different personalities, different people of all sorts. And that's why God's church is successful. That's why it works, by the unity of all these dif diverse people, um, we all get to Christ by the same faith. Another comment from the audience. Once I was working and I was uh, uh, and got called. In in everything we do, we have to even when we're working, we have to give God the glory. Maybe to a, uh, to a deaf person. How do I explain to them what does it mean, the glory of God? Is that like the person or the, the uh, physical attributes of God? Or what is that? How, how do you describe the glory of God? Okay. The, to, s to s give God is to give God the uh, credit for the good things that happen. Uh, for example, like, um, uh, like, when in 9-11, when the two jet airliners crashed into those buildings, some people were mad at God, blaming God for what happened. And people, and why is it God didn't stop that? But what happened, how, where, where was God's glory? When people helped each other, that really gave the glory to God. When people were working together, cooperating, when people were helping, supporting each other, taking care of each other, the the accident the crash was was uh, tragic it was a tragic attack but the response of people uh, serving and helping each other that was glory to god uh, when we do what god has taught us to do to help each other to put other people's needs first does that help explain it yes we must accept people who have different personalities Yes, even personalities. Some some people have a friendly, pleasant, uh, some people not. Ch it's a challenge for us to accept those people, those difficult personalities. I know we have members of our church who are very bold and very outspoken. Yes, I'm one of those people. I am very blunt sometimes. Like one person who came to me, he had a problem. My son has this problem. My son hates me. He doesn't like me. And I looked at him. Are your children mad at you? Yes. Why are they mad at me? Do you cause them to be mad at you? Do you, you scold, yell at them and make them mad at you? Me? Do I do that? Oh, and he woke up. But he woke up, I hope. That's what I mean. I can be bold. Uh, some deaf members do not like me to be bold. They're afraid of me. They won't come to me. What can I do? See? A preacher. Uh, yeah, a preacher that people are afraid to come to? No, don't be afraid of me. I'm not going to bite you. Sometimes Jesus was bold. Paul was bold with people, and he was blunt, and he directed, this is wrong, and he criticized it directly. This person, uh, expel that person from the uh, group. Let the devil have him. That was a bold statement from Paul. That's why we must accept people who are timid, 
and afraid, not not willing to speak up, and some people who are very uh, bo- uh, who blurt out like Peter sometimes. Right. And some people are very blunt. Some people are shy. Some people are confident, and some people have different characters. Uh, we must accept these each other with these different personalities. He says, nothing is new under the sun. That's right. That's happened a long time ago, and it still happens today. But people all have different personalities, different characteristics. And that's why God uses them all for his glory. And that's why God uses deaf people. But why am I deaf? Why did God make me born deaf? Why, why shouldn't I blame God for being deaf? No, God uses our deafness for his glory to teach other deaf people. It's not negative. It's positive. We were not born by accident. God had. God makes no accidents. I'm happy to be deaf. I accept that. That's who I am. That's. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. People say, "Oh, I'm so sorry for you being deaf." No, don't pity me for being deaf. No, forget that. Be glad you're deaf because God is going to use you to teach other people through sign language. You know that our deaf group, we have a real mixture. Uh, some people are, use ASL and some are very oral. Some grew up and learned, some learned sign language later. And some people just strictly script reading. They don't use sign language at all. They're still just oral. We have one new member, uh, say two years ago, uh, an older couple. They're about my age. and. Uh, uh, Tom, he loves music. He loves, and he uh, lip reads all the time he speaks. But the deaf accept him. We must learn. We must learn. There are different kinds of deaf people, and some people have some deaf people have cochlear implants. Accept it. That's all right. In the future, with our young children, more and more will have cochlear. Many have cochlear implants, and there will be more. But the gospel is for them too. Uh, if you notice hearing people may not accept them and if, if, if hearing people don't accept them and deaf people don't accept them they're isolated who's going to accept them? Christ Christ can accept them no matter what learn to accept them whether they have col- even the people with cochlear implants uh, you, you, when you reject them if the deaf reject them the hearing reject them then where are they? it's not their fault it's not the parents went uh, the doctors convinced them and they they accepted and tried that so that's why we must learn to accept both most even deaf people who are different we may accept them all too that's why the bible tells us that we must be like jesus christ yes May God, who gives you this patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other as is fitting for the followers of Jesus Christ. Then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must have it giving us patience and, and complete harmony of unity, unity. So many, there are many different kinds of deaf people. We w- must learn harmony. The same idea with uh, that, like the Tower of Babel. There were different communications at that time, but when but God confused their language and they spread out. But in some day heaven will be back one language again in heaven. So here's three points. Brothers and sisters, warn those, urge those who are lazy. Get busy. Do something. Don't be lazy. Sit around and do nothing. No, encourage them. 
encourage those who are timid. What's timid? It's uh, oh, people who are afraid to do something. Timid, uh, timid people who don't want to do anything. Saying I don't know how. I don't know what to do. Uh, and so I encourage them and and take tender care of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. We have some deaf who are very educated and now intelligent. Some people are very low educated, and, and uh, but they must accept each other. Mm -hmm. And we have rich and poor, it doesn't matter. Accept each other, be patient with everyone. Be like, uh, yeah, fellowship with each other regardless. People, you can't have the rich associating together and the poor associating, you have to mix together, get to know each other, fe fellowship. Just like black people all segregated and white people all on one side. No, get together, come together and interact and socialize. Yes, but our, our church is uh, unique. We have many different ethnic groups. We have Hispanic, we have black, we have white. Um, uh, we have some, we don't have a lot of Asian in our church, but we have some. Uh, sent, uh, we have inner city people, inner city background people. Uh, we have many who are uh, much more rich and some who are poor. We have deaf people at our church. So uh, that I love that group. There's The church is learning to accept each other in, in diversity. I'm very impressed with our church over that. comment from the audience, uh, my past church, uh, that there were Mennonites, um, there was a Mennonite deaf church, and uh, th they were a very closed group uh, and did not, did not encourage uh, socialization. And that's why in the apostles' time, they were con trying to encourage people. You have Jews and Gentiles, get together, get, don't be seg segregated. Uh, and Jesus, when he died on the cross, he tore down that veil uh, b between Jews and Gentiles. You see that picture of the d people of different countries, Italian, French, Japanese, uh, Americans, all different nationalities all together, um, coming together in unity as one. And we have brothers in Christ in all these countries, and we have uh, yeah. and we're all united in Christ as in the same belief. But today there's still this problem in the church. We still have segregated groups and that uh, reject each other and, and don't associate, and that does cause problems. Yes, it does go happen. Where did we learn that? We learned that growing up in school. Uh, and so that's why we have to learn in the gospel and we have to learn to tolerate. From the audience, it's interesting to me how um, uh, oh, that during the time of the Civil War, uh, the blacks and whites were separated uh, and uh, you know, they had forced segregation and but then when they were together in business or something, they, they still were divided up into groups. And, and that was wrong to, to force that segregation. But today now we still have the parents having that influence on the, pa on the children to not, if the parents were more uh, kind and, uh, and more accepting, then the children will learn to be accepting as well, and would not be uh, uh, would not be so rejecting of, of people who are different. Uh, the parents uh, influence the children greatly in this way. Okay, I think that is the last. Do we have any more discussion on that? Then have a comment from the uh, audience here. Uh, referring to this verse saying, brothers and uh, sisters, be patient. Um, I know that uh, we all need hope. We all 
are from different locales, different, uh, you know, some you're from Colorado, someone else from West Virginia. We have different, all these different states all represented here today. But, uh, but yet we're all together here in, in unity in this workshop. There's no, no distinction, no division over the different locales of, of the churches here. Uh, and that's, that's the picture that, that Christ is showing us, that, uh, you know, um, how, okay. how all of us have different personalities. We have different, uh, different levels of pride. We push that pride back down. When the pride comes, we just put it down. Don't be that way. Learn to uh, uh, accept. I'm, I live here in Lubbock, and I have a vision of what the church is like here in Lubbock. I attended SIBI here and uh, graduated, and I feel you know good and educated. I feel I saw so many great things here and uh, saw many great lessons. Um, uh, somebody else who graduated, uh, uh, the teachers here like Bob and Hollis who've been here, and uh, many others. Is uh, I've ex experienced all these different personalities, and I learned so much from these people. But to become arrogant and to uh, become uh, self-confident, uh, say I can do it all, and to uh, speak up, you know, um, I have to learn to to love and to listen, and uh, uh, it, it it doesn't matter where people are from, it doesn't matter what their background has been. We're all the same in 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 Christ. No. Uh, no distinction between those who have more education, less education, more money, less money, all the variance, variation, all the different people. It's beautiful to have the coming together of all to become one church, not a black church and a white church, or the Greeks and the Jews. It's all one. And that's, uh, we, we can't, uh, 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 we can't be divided. The church is not divided. But and and, and just, just like a hus uh, marriage, a husband and wife are both not perfect. They have to learn to work together. One person who was a visitor came to our church one time. Uh, this person was from Chicago, and he liked to uh, challenge people and uh, and uh, and he liked to uh, yeah he asked you know challenging and and pointed questions, and he's thinking uh, he's thinking his attitude that he was superior and that uh, he he knew more. And one time I got blunt with him. You be careful yourself. Don't you don't know everything, and the person was taken aback. Uh, because I was telling him the truth. Sometimes people will not listen until you are blunt and, and confront them. Uh, sometimes other people weren't telling them, but I had to be brave and bold and go to him and tell him to his face uh, that uh, you, you're acting like you know everything. And the person uh, backed off, and he learned, I'm sorry I had to be so blunt with him sometimes. Uh, <laughs> You know, maybe I could have asked, are you God? Uh, maybe that would have helped. Sometimes people need to hear the truth. Uh, and uh, we must tell people the truth. Uh, because I believe that a person who is truly a friend can tell me the truth now about my weakness. That's what I need to know. Then I can improve myself. Maybe other people will never tell me, and I stay the same. I ste keep on doing the same wrong thing and never change, never grow until somebody confronts me and tells me the truth. And really, I should be grateful. Sometimes when people, uh, uh, when people criticize me, I try to say, thank you for telling me that. Sometimes people, uh, uh, some people get upset when you, when you tell them that. That's the wrong attitude. And that's why if a person criticizes and accepts, you can say, thank you for helping me. I'm, you're a friend of mine for telling me the truth. A person who is not a true friend won't, will ta won't tell you anything. They won't help you. So I believe that a person who tells me the truth about my problems and my attitude, I need to know that, and I will accept that. That takes a strong person to accept. A person who is weak, no, they're not ready for that. Uh, from the audience. Uh, uh, okay. 
like in the book of Gallus, book of Malachi, where God said, now you sin against me. And Malachi asked, well, how are we sinning against you? They, they knew, but they wouldn't admit it. God says you stole from me. Uh, God says you stole me. How did we steal from you? Yeah, it's like that yeah, from the book of Malachi. So God can be blunt sometimes, too. Um, like in one story, a, a friend of mine who is a preacher, he'd done mission work in South Africa. And one woman he was trying to teach, and he's speaking, he speaks Spanish, and he does speak Spanish well, so he's explaining to her and teaching her, and she's listening. Uh, but she's very uh, uh, resistant to accepting the teaching, not interested, not, uh, not accepting. And then he said, well, he says, if you don't accept Christ, you'll be lost. He says, no, I won't be lost. I'm fine. And he over and over again continued to keep teaching. And finally, she, her mind was closed. And he told her straight, lady, you, lady, you are lost, period. And her eyes woke up. It got her, it, that, that was a, that got her right between the eyes. You, sometimes you have to be law. You have to be blunt with people, lady. You are lost. Period. And that happened, and that got that person's attention. Another one from the audience says, uh, Nathan. Nathan. Oh, uh, just as the prophet Nathan approached David um, about the adultery, and he told the story uh, about the. Uh, he says, and at the end of that story, uh, he says, "You are the man." And that was uh, got that got David right between the eyes, and uh, he had to be blunt with him to get his attention. I, I'm sorry to have to be blunt, but sometimes that's needed. In the case of this uh, story, this uh, woman who is not a Christian and she believed that she was at some point, the, the preacher finally had to tell him, you are not a Christian, you're lost. And that got the person's attention. Okay, I thank you for your attention, and I hope this lesson has been some benefit to you.